Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to PhD and Productivity. If you are new here, my name is Kira and I'm a first year computer science PhD student. I made this YouTube channel to work on my public speaking as well as share my experience and any sort of tips that I have for PhD students all over the world. So if you would like to see videos about doing a PhD and staying productive, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when new videos are uploaded. Today I'm going to be sharing with you sort of my process for finding new papers and deciding whether these are going to be worth my time to read at a given time, as well as take you through the process of reading a paper as well. So make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And this video was decided on a poll in a Facebook group for PhD students. So I was thinking I may start my own Facebook group just so that you guys could have more of an opportunity to get involved with what kind of videos I make. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you guys would be interested in. So we are starting off here on Google Scholar. For a bit of context, I'm currently working on my literature review and my PhD is in computer science or machine learning techniques to support endurance athletes such as marathon runners. So what I'm working on at the moment is the injury prevention and prediction element of this work. So the papers that I'm looking for are all related to the incidence of running related injuries, the causes and risk factors, as well as injury prevention and any work that has been done in the field of computer science so far for this. So I'm starting off here on Google Scholar and I'm starting with a paper that I've already read as it's been quite useful for injury incidences and now I'm going to be doing a citation tracing so looking through all of the different articles that cite this article to find more um, papers that will be relevant to what I want to talk about. So clicking here on cited by I can see all of the different articles that cite this article and then this is sort of the first part of reading is looking through the titles of articles and seeing if these are relevant to your work. So there's some here that I can see would be relevant or would not be relevant. So this article here is about barefoot running. That's not really relevant because people won't be running a marathon barefoot, but it might be useful to get even something out of it at some point, but I think I will leave it for the moment. Then the impact of body mass on my biomechanics of rec recreational runners. At this time, I'm not really interested in the actual biomechanics of runners, more so how if this article was the impact of body mass index on running related injuries, then yes, that would be relevant. Um, This article here definitely sounds interesting, not for what I'm working on right now, but I think it's worth saving anyways. So let me just do that. I'm also using the Mendeley extension for Chrome so that means that when I come across an article that I want to download into my Mendeley I just have to click on the web importer and you know decide where I want it to go and I already have it saved in here so that's where it goes at the moment and then I can just save it to my Mendeley instead of having to download it and have it take up space on my computer. So I can go back now and then see if there's any more Ultrasound of sports injuries of the musculoskeletal system. Nope, that's not going to be relevant. So this one might be relevant because it's to do with running shoes and how they, you know, the opinions of shoe, shoe salespersons, how that affects um, how they prescribe shoes. So let's just take a look at this one. So the f second pass then, so once um, an article has drawn in your attention just with the title, the next thing to do will be to read the abstract and decide if this is in fact something that you want to read in full or even if it's something that you want to read part of. 
I think a lot of people sort of get into the feeling that they need to read absolutely everything they come across and that's really not true because there's going to be a ton of things that you won't need to read the full paper of because you know you might be interested in what they found but you don't personally need to know the ins and outs of the methodology because it's not something you're going to employ yourself so just having a quick read through the abstract here so they're saying many runners and practitioners feel that the the main a main cause for running related injury is the prescription of running shoes that are unsuitable so that's interesting and this actually might so they're saying that this might be caused due to marketing so that would be interesting perhaps to look through the intro section to see where they got these sort of facts from because that could be something that I would like to use so I'd probably be interested in finding these in the paper and seeing the original papers that they came from so then this study was looking to examine the beliefs of running shoe sale persons and physiotherapy students regarding the influence of running shoes and foot pronation on aura or eye so their main findings then are that salespersons believe they know more about running shoes and foot pronation and running related injury than students do. So that's with a high p value, it's very significant. And then people don't really believe that, well, 30% of students and only 14% of salespersons believe that training errors cause or ori lots of salespersons seem to believe that more expensive shoes are better at preventing ori than cheaper shoes compared to students only 15 percent believe this and salespersons would recommend uninjured runners although 39 percent of students too would recommend uninjured runners change their running shoe despite being satisfied with their current shoe so that's interesting as well so these could be like something to include as a side point perhaps about how running shoes and you know the impact of that for different runners so I'm going to download this one so this here prognosis and prevention of injuries in recreational runners is something that I know immediately will be very interesting and very useful for my kind of topic so I've already downloaded this because it is a PhD thesis all about running related injuries and it's very, very useful for my topics. So I hope that just gave you a, a general insight into how I kind of conduct a citation tracing to look through different papers to see which ones will be relevant and just the initial stages to decide if I'll be reading a paper. So... So now we're going to be looking through a main paper for me in my Mendeley. So this is going to be a main paper that I'll be using in my PhD research in general. So this one's useful for you guys to see because this is an article that I'll be reading in full. But just to show you the steps that are taken for how you want to read something like this. So the first thing that obviously got my attention was running with cases, a case-based reasoning approach to running your best marathon. So because my topic is marathon running and the use of computer science and machine learning, this is definitely suitable to me. So the first thing that I'm going to do is read through the abstract as usual um, and just highlight anything important. But generally the whole abstract is important, so it's usually highlighted in full but this is just to make sure that I do want to read this paper I'll be reading the abstract first of all so I can already see that this paper is a novel application of case-based reasoning to address predicting a personal best finish time for marathon runners and recommending a pacing plan so this is definitely something I'm going to want to read further. So the next thing that I do is go down to the conclusion and just figure out what they actually found. Mm 
So they were able to find the best with a mean approach. Okay. So there's not a huge amount of detail in the conclusion section, but it's mainly that, you know, this was useful and for future work, it should be developed further. So I know already that this is something I definitely do want to continue reading. And now I'm going to go and read the introduction in detail. And this will give me a good insight into the problem and the motivation for this research. So this is good as well because it tells me what kind of background info I would need to be including for a paper similar to this. So incorporating ideas about why this is important. So why runners would want to know a predicted time, why that's valuable to runners and similar for pacing and the important things that affect pacing um, as well as the different pacing strategies that exist. So that's all good background info to know and to be including in a paper similar to this. So then for this type of paper, the best place to go next is to just look at some of the um, graphics and the plots and things like that to see if I can understand them and see what insights that gives me. So that's what I'm doing next. So reading, looking through the plot and as well looking at the description of the figure. And then looking through the algorithms as well, just to see if I can get a basic understanding of their methods. So looking through both of these can already give me a good understanding of how the system works. And that's something that's really helpful rather than I will go through the entire method if I get to a stage where I understand that this paper is something I'm going to definitely use. Um, but for the moment, it's possible to just look through basically the graphs and algorithms just to see to make sure do I understand what's going on so then looking at the results I can see how what they did worked and how successful it was and that's something that's going to be useful to know as well so this is about the prediction error for men and women using the different types of um pay prediction models that they used how they sort of aggregated the cases together so they used three different methods and to show that there are differences between the errors so I can see how they mentioned the mean was the best you can kind of see that that's true because the error is lower and here the profile similarity is higher so that means I can see how that works and a similar plot here so we're showing for different finish times, how does the error change? So you can see that the error is significantly higher for these slower runners. And similarly for the pacing, the profile similarity is not as high for slower runners. So that's one drawback of their approach already. We can see there still needs to be work because it doesn't um, suit the slower runners at the moment. So that slower runners is like five, six hours.
and we can see that the difference in their personal bests, how significant that was, impacts prediction error and not so much profile similarity. So I already feel like I got a decent understanding from these plots of the general findings and now I'm going to read through the results and discussion section as well. So they just have a discussion section. Okay, so I'm going to read through this and then I'll be able to understand more in more detail the main findings from the paper since there wasn't as much of this in the conclusion. So this is just further summarising what I already learned from looking at the plots and the graphs. Yeah, so the, just this section sort of summarised those results as well as any potential issues with what might have impacted the results as well. And I'm just going to read the evaluation section before I read the problem definition and sort of case-based reasoning approach because... It's better for me to have the understanding of how this paper worked first and then when I really want to actually implement these ideas, I will read the other two sections. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but just so that you have this idea now, that's sort of the method that I take is to go through first the abstract to decide if this paper is definitely worth reading. Then I read the conclusion to get more of an understanding of the main findings of the paper and everything like that. And then I go back and read the introduction to get the background information and the context for the problem and how this work is actually motivated then I will read through the you know figures and algorithms to get an understanding of how it worked and then go through the results and discussion section and then lastly I'll go through the methods section for when I really want to understand the methods for implementation for myself so that is it for this video I really hope that it was helpful and enjoyable I aim to put out a fair amount of content over the next while since I am spending more time at home. So if you would like to see more videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when they are uploaded. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing and I will see you in the next video.